Hi Kim, welcome back to Astrology Alert. So what have you been up to? What have you been intuiting? Intuiting? Well, intuiting. <laughs> a, a lot of intuiting going on. Um, I was um, I was just going to show you that I made some cards that um, I thought could be helpful for people. It, it's it's taken quite a while to do them, but it was something I knew that I wanted to do. And so they're called power of intention cards mm -hmm. and they are, um, they have, they come with a little stand like that. So you can place the card on the little easel and they are black and white. They look like this. They have all have pretty oh. pictures on them. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side is a prayer of intention. And, um, uh, they're kind of used like Oracle cards. You can use them situationally. Like if you have a situation and you want to know how to handle it, you can do that, but you can pull one a day, one a week, one a month. If it's a big thing, like forgiveness, and you want to just keep it up for the month and just keep repeating that prayer. Um, but they have, I'll just kind of pull one, um, for today. So I got, um, personal power as the lighthouse on this side. And then on the back is the prayer. And it says today, my prayer of intention is to recognize and exercise my personal power. May I use my personal power today in harmony with each choice I make. And so yeah. nice. you can just kind of repeat that prayer and keep it in your intention for the day. Um, I have some people that choose several a day to work on. Um, just depends, depends on, on how you'd like to use them, but they're kind of used more like Oracle cards. Um, and then I also have, um, I do my classes with Debbie, but we're kind of on hiatus cause we're doing our retreat next month. Um, but uh, we're, um, I do have classes that are, um, on my website that you can, you purchase them and download them. So you have them forever. And one of them is a beginning course to work on your abilities. If you're just starting to kind of delve in or get interested, it starts from the, I mean, literally the very beginning, it helps you pick a, a personal practice and it goes all the way to figuring out what your um, dominant and secondary abilities are. And then there's kind of an advanced class that you can go to after that. And then I have one on um, orbs, if you want to start working with orbs. And I have one on the dowsing rods. Um, oh, fascinating. So if you're interested oh. in any of those things, um, just to begin, you know, you know, if you're in that seeking mode where you're ready to go, those are just some places to start, some things to do to, to help you out or continue your practice. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I'll, I'll be sure to put all that information in the video description so people can find your channel right. and the, you know, the different links. And right. it's, it's really fascinating that you've made black and white cards because it, immediately the connection is to Saturn. Saturn is the planet of practice. And mm -hmm. Saturn, nobody likes Saturn. You know, as soon as a person hears, oh, Saturn is in, it, because it tends to be, challenging but the thing is the irony is things only happen when saturn gets involved because saturn is the one that encourages you to practice and the idea of setting an intention and then working with it is saturnian so uh this is a really great way okay. to to link you know the astrology to this and to remind people that saturn energy that way yes it can be challenging but it's also the most critical in in moving things forward and in that sense it's it's the practice part the jupiter wouldn't be like a black or brown you know or black and white type thing jupiter would be more colorful but it's the result of your right. focus that uh you know uh, th that's why it happens i mean otherwise why would you set you set the intention then you right. move in that direction right so yeah that's excellent that's fascinating yeah and um i you know i i before i made the cards i i work with intention all the time because i think it's it's so important to get clear on that so that you know how to move forward. Because if you don't know why you're doing something, you don't know what the intention is behind it. It's really hard to manifest. It's hard to move forward in your life. It's hard to figure out what your purpose is right now. 
those kinds of things. So it's really, it's such an important thing. And that's so fascinating to know about Saturn because, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very, very much in, in line with that for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's, it's the, you know, you, you could say it's the connection to a person's will. And I've often felt this way really from the beginning, since I got into astrology, that a large part of the chart is your own will interacting with the universe and you get something back. So mm -hmm. it's not really correct to say, well, I have this chart or I have this life and things are just happening to me. No, right. you're doing things and then you're getting things back. So if you get better and better at setting intentions, which is really what it is, you set an intention and then you act on it, well, then of course it's going to affect your life. And you, there will still be events and things that are beyond your control. But the bulk of it is you, you know, the my, my uh, I think of it as 80 20. Most of it is your intention, then it channels through the planet cycles. And the other thing is that a person that is more intentional, tends to do a lot better when when the cycles are more challenging, because they're already practiced in that. And so they just work even harder. And the other thing is that with Saturn, what I notice is that Nobody does anything serious until Saturn comes by, you know, in, in terms of sacrificing oh, something right. to move forward. So it's a super important energy and it's very much wired to the idea of, okay, I'm going to work on this in order to create it. You know, manifestation is creation, right? And it starts right. with your mind and then, That's right. and then then you take actions. And and, and and also, too, you probably you probably would agree with this, that you set the intention and in a certain way, the universe starts to work on it with you. So then you start seeing strange synchronicities and coincidences that are aligned with that intention, which if you then think, okay. you think, well, wait a second, that means that if I'm intending negative, I'm going to see those two. So you don't want to do that, right? That's the whole logic is stay right. out of the, you know, oh, this is no good and it won't work and nobody likes me. Then yeah. the universe will say, okay, well, if that's your dream, I'll help you manifest it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's not a good thing, right? <laughs> That's not a good dream. No. Well, no. exactly. I think, and I think, and that is, that is how manifesting works. I think people think it's magic. It's really not. It's very, you know, the universe and your guides, your higher self, however you want to put it, very practical. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not just magic. There are, there are, it's, it's a very practical way that all of this stuff works. And if you can just, kind of get in that mode, like you said, of kind of f figuring out exactly where you are and what you would like, then the universe starts to work with you as, as you take steps forward as well. It's, it very much is a partnership. Exactly. It isn't just one thing happening to something else. Otherwise, where would our will be, right? We all have free will. So it is, a, it's a partner, it's a deliberate decision and a partnership that happens. You're exactly. right. Exactly. Exactly. I a hundred percent agree. Mm -hmm. And and then the thing is that person realizes this, that it's itself is magic because then you know what the work is. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, if you're in, if you're in an, in an in incarnation in a body, things don't happen immediately. There's a process. It takes time. It takes, you know, there's a, a period of time you may have to wait, but the intention is what takes you there. And it's just mm -hmm. a matter of showing up and showing up and training yourself to be like this. And that then wires into the chart and, and, and so on. And, that's, uh, that's exactly so, right. And I remember you tell, I mean, I learned from you that, you know, planets, when, you, when a planet comes into your, your is, is in your chart and it comes in and that you, the way it's really the way you respond mm -hmm. to that. It's not that it takes you over and then everything just goes crazy. It's your response to it. So if you know that, okay, a planet's coming in, that's going to be very, um, challenging, or it's going to challenge me in a lot of ways, being able to meet that with, okay, I'm going to really be practical. I'm going to be really honed in on my decisions and honed in on my daily life so that nothing trips me up. I can be really aware because I know this, this planet's coming in and it, it mm -hmm. offers challenges. So I think that's a great thing to keep in mind as well, that we, even then, even with planets coming into our, into our charts or through our charts, it's, we still have control over how we w respond to that exactly right how you respond how you channel it i mean even the notion that if you say okay well you can intend what you would like to manifest 
But then the person may say, well, I don't know what to intend. Okay, well, then what you do is you intend clear mind because the clear mind will show you what to intend. There's always a way to do this, but yes. keep it on the upside. The more you start to drift into this isn't happening, I'm not good at this, mm -hmm. then you, that's what you're intending. Like you, you're, you're intending even when you don't realize it. So exactly. that's the job all the time because you could also intend something really positive at nine o'clock in the morning and then spend the rest of the day thinking negatively. That's also not going to work because then you undo the thing that you did. So that's right. Uh, so intending to be really positive is a really good intention, for example. So all of them are good. And in a sense, if you're always intending on the upside and you think of it as a year long process, then you're constantly working in this direction. What happens is you become really mentally fit, just like someone that goes to the gym becomes really strong in their muscles and in their tendons because they're always working them. It's the same idea, right? And the great part That's is that it stays thing. with you. And, you know, after a while, it's natural because at first, it's new and so you have to you know, overcome your previous momentum that is maybe more negative. But as time is passing, it becomes more and more natural. So then, then you won't even think that negatively during the day or whatever that could undo your intentions. It becomes... Uh, I the totally agree with that. And, and you're right, is, it is more of kind of a habit that you have to get you have to get into in a mode that you have to kind of just continually um, keep stepping into. Um, exactly. especially if you've been negative in the past, you've, you've had, you know, you've had that mindset undoing that you're right. It takes time, but right. it, it does work and yeah. it, it, it yeah. does come to fruition. It does work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the Saturn in astrology is the contracting force. So if you think about something that contracts, it easily goes to negativity because it feels squeezed. And so the idea of someone being depressed, feel limited, feel like there are a wall around them. That's a Saturn feeling. But really, the idea is to turn the Saturn into its highest manifestation, which is, is the idea of focusing, uh, working and focusing is bringing the energy in. When you're doing that, you're channeling the Saturn. That's an actual planet in your chart that will start to deliver those results rather than the other results. But if you're not already at that point, then you have to build it to get it to that point. It means that up to now, your Saturn is tilting more negative. And then you can say, well, it's my upbringing, it's my all kinds of things, right? My childhood, all of that may be true, but at some point you have to turn it around or things will keep happening along those lines. That's why, for example, people will say things like, you know, my in my childhood, my father was an alcoholic and then I keep meeting men that are alcoholics. Well, that's because that's the momentum, but you can now change that intention. And after a while, we don't know that how long that is. I mean, it's anything from a day to... <laughs> a year or two, whatever it is, right? The right. work is like that. Get in there. And so, for example, through those cards, if a person is doing that and they're always training their mind on the positive side, it's inevitable. Your life will improve. Mm -hmm. And and so then when you have harder cycles, you just keep working. You keep working toward your goal. And when the cycles are easier, the universe delivers. You know, it just gives yes. you, it's like the bounty of things. And it's reflected. You know, this is what, by the way, the whole idea of, the attraction principle, you, you realize that you yourself are like a magnetic field or a field of energy and whatever that totality of energy is, is what is attracting things. You know, mm -hmm. I know that may sound to some people like it's Pollyanna. It's a hundred percent true. <laughs> it is a hundred percent true. Yeah. It, well, it's and it, and it, it, there's a science to it, right? There is a science. It's not like it's just, it's crazy magic. It, there is a science to it and you can, you can test it out, go out on a day you feel really happy and positive and see how well things go for you as you go to the grocery store and you get the right parking space, you do it. And then go out on, on a day you feel, you know, down and out and see how things, again, that those that you attract that I can't, can't find a parking space. I can't, da, 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 da. you know, this exactly. person was rude to me. They cut in front of me that, you know, it yeah. is, it yeah. is true. And you can exactly. test it out. Exactly. You know, by the way, I, I'm listening to you and my mind, knows exactly what you're talking about. And then so now someone watching us could think, well, the, either these people are telling me the truth or they're both crazy. That's possible. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but this is exactly it. I've said this to people many, many times. If I go out the door with my energy all, you know, uh, dense and uh, out of sorts, 
I meet the people in that universe and it's totally palpable. I'll, I'll go into a mm -hmm. store somewhere and someone is bumping me and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is horrible. <laughs> and, you know, and, and if I'm feeling really good, it's like I enter a different universe. The people yes. are nice, everybody's smiling, things yes. are flowing. So the thing to do is get in the right balance, get in the right harmony so that things can flow, right? But it's an easy thing to say and it takes quite a bit of time to practice and get really good so that you don't get those, you know, oscillations where you get the bad days. And, uh, but if you work on it and it starts definitely on the mental level by deciding this is where I'm going to go. And then as the days, weeks, months, you know, are passing, you go that way. And then uh, this is the idea that an astrology chart would be a map of what you can do of your possibilities rather than your limitations, right? Uh, you never think of even, a, for example, someone that has uh, something like Saturn Mercury square, the standard, if you go to the low end would be, well, this person uh, might have a limited mind because Saturn squares. Actually, what it is, is that they should be working on their mind. And a person like that can have an even stronger mind, right? They're the ones right. that write the book on mind. They'll write right. a book and say, right. this is how you master your mind and this and that. The person that doesn't have that pressure never develops that that quality right so that's the irony that having more challenges in a chart can be really really useful and even in in the periods or cycles people always make moves when the planets challenge them when the planets are easy then they kind of float right which is good mm -hmm. if you've done good things up to then then you take a break enjoy life but you're not going to move forward in the same way so that's the, no and when you and when you hit those when you practice like you said when you build that muscle where you're being where you're finding things that make you feel positive whether it's music or meditation or whatever you choose to kind of build that positivity up in you then when you do hit those speed bumps because we all have death we all have you know um you lose jobs or you have, you know, people around you that are having a difficult time. You're trying to help them. All of us have those things that happen. But when you have built up that muscle, what happens is you kind of are in a, you're able to kind of go to your toolbox mm -hmm. and pull out those tools. And then those, those kinds of things, they, they still happen and they are, they still are challenging, but you can move through them so much easier. You can move through them so much quicker it's it just doesn't have the same like doesn't pack the same wallet as when when you are not in that mindset you're not paying attention you're not you know you're 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 already negative then it can just lay you flat but if you're not in that space and something happens you can move through it quick more quickly and and more easily yeah i, I agree 1000 percent. that's exactly yeah. exactly how it works and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, the idea with, with something like Saturn as well, or, or this whole topic is just keep showing up, keep showing up. You will figure it out. Even if you think, yeah. well, I don't know how to do this. Don't worry. It, it becomes pretty obvious, especially as you are practicing and seeing the synchronicities and the sense that you're, you've made the connection. It itself starts to guide you. And then you'll get more out of what people are saying, someone else who's done it a lot more, or it could even be a person that appears random and it'll resonate with you. Oh, that's what it is. Because it's the universe speaking to you, you know, because you, yeah. you've you set up the line. It's like you've picked up the phone line and <laughs> you're connected. Yeah, yeah, other exactly. Being, other exactly. than being disconnected. Yeah, 100% true. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So wonderful. That Well, that's good. Uh, hope everyone tunes into tunes into your your uh, cards. And also you say you, you do courses too. To, uh, yeah. To explore yeah, the yeah, same absolutely the just same thing. yeah just start start somewhere you know you got to start somewhere and and that's a that's a good place to start yeah, yeah you know the, this includes too the the notion that uh if a person isn't sure and back to the thing where we said well the intention could be to have a clear mind it also illuminates why meditation teachings work so well because if a person is not even bothering to necessarily imagine anything, but they're just doing a lot of mind centering. The same thing happens because in that centering, bringing it in and, and being in, in harmony, there is a spontaneous connection to, to life as well. So there's almost like a envisioning without envisioning because of your harmony. So that, that gives meaning to that as well. So in that sense, 
person could just do that that and, and not necessarily be worried about what to do next specifically it'll, it'll come to them it'll it'll, yeah. it'll show up that's, in that's I, yeah. yeah i could not agree more exactly yeah. exactly so having said all that and what about <laughs> what, do you, what what kind of meditations do you think trump is doing <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, let's delve into these, <laughs> the awful that is. <laughs> I know, it is just so crazy, so crazy. Well, and you know, it, that it's interesting too, because he, he's actually a really good example of, you know, he thinks that he, um, you know, ha masters the positive thinking, you know, he's all about the, you know, that the, the book on positive thinking that his dad used to read and that he used to live by, but what Trump has, because he's not a positive person, right? So he's taken these principles of, you know, kind of uh, moving things forward and he can make things happen because he bugs people. He doesn't give up. We've seen how tenacious he is. He is, you know, kind of relentless in his pounding away and pounding away. And it, he's a good example of that you can make some progress so you can mm -hmm. get through things doing it that way but at some point you hit a wall and at some yeah. point it's never quite what he thinks it's going to be it's always something you know it's always lands with just a thump mm -hmm. and it's because there isn't that that positivity that positive flow that happens like you were talking about when you're kind of in sync with with the universe and you're, you're really listening and you're really aware and you're really, um, you're very present, you know, you're, you're aware of your thought process and you're aware he's aware of none of that. Right. But he can still make some progress just by being forceful. Mm -hmm. So he's a good example of how, how you, you can force things through just by being the way that he is a bully basically, but it only goes so far. Yeah. And now we see him caught in this web that he ha he himself has made um, through all of his just negativity, just being negative, negative, negative all the time and pushing negative stuff and trying to get negative stuff done and doing it in a negative way. And here he is. He's completely caught up in a nightmare. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> I, I, yeah. I wouldn't trade places with him for all of the money in the world <laughs> that's true that's true it's totally true i mean if, if you think about it it's it's it has it has a logic or it has a something that makes sense around his problem is that he doesn't understand that he shares his being with everyone else it, it that my sense of life is we're all one being so if you're doing you know negative things even evil things to other people it rebounds on you like he's not in a cave mm -hmm. he's in society so in fact saturn has a society a connection as well it's the idea of the order of things he keeps trying to you know tear it down uh do things that harm people so then it turns on him and and you know that's why society has to put people like him in its place or it'll it'll just fall apart it'll turn into chaos and he doesn't understand that at all so but even so i agree with you it's the strength of his focus he you know that, that tells you the universe rewards focus even if you are doing something that is not good for the entire being, but when you do that, it'll it'll turn on you, you know, and then things will come in to neutralize you, to stop you, because in violating the order, you violate everybody's harmony. And, and this is why, for instance, separately, this guy Menendez, you know, the Democrat, and by the way, sad to see, but there are crooks on the Demo uh, Democratic side. If the, what I read is anywhere near true, <laughs> I mean, you think, are you kidding me? The guy's got, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in his house and he's saying, well, it's because I'm Cuban. No, it's because you're, I mean, <laughs> God almighty, this is nuts. Oh, I'm, I'm storing all this money in socks and in different places because, because when I was in Cuba, come on, come on, I mean, please. And then, you know, there's this trail of evidence and so forth. So, uh, yeah. even so, he has some focus that he's followed. The problem is that He's violating the order. So my the way I sometimes say to people is you can be a great bank robber. The universe will help you for a while, but right. it's not a good right. thing to do. You are getting into dangerous territory. Trump is like a criminal machine. He doesn't know how yeah. to you know, respect rules. So then they come back to haunt him. And when you see the cycles, 
it's in line with that. It's in line with that. The, 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 the Saturn pressure that he's under is now as a result of prior actions, you know, that, that confront him. And right. I would find it very unlikely that he would turn to a, you know, to a new direction. But you can learn from him in the sense that he, whatever it is, he fully believes in himself and in his insanity and he pushes it. So I don't recommend that particular belief, but I recommend the belief itself and the intention. <laughs> that yeah, I yeah, exactly. Recommend. Yeah, it, exactly. And, and, and you can also see how he, because of his, like you were talking about that energy field, right? His energy field is, it's, it's basically hate. It's kind of the, 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 the energy of hate. If you think of that as kind of covering somebody and I've never seen anyone who's better at hate because not only does he get people to hate the things that he hates and to hate on his behalf and hate draws pe other people that hate are drawn to him. You know, that other people that are, are kind of intolerant and hateful, they're very drawn into him. And then you also have people that direct hate at him. Mm -hmm. So he just is like this magnet for, for hate. And it's, it's who he's become. It's his, it's his whole countenance and it's going to be. And that's also why you see him surrounded by other criminals, other people who are just as awful yeah. there. He draws them in. He draws it like a moth to a flame, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is that it's there, there he, this is common with uh, people in history I, mean, I know that it's been overplayed to say Trump is like Hitler. He actually is a lot like Hitler. Watch, uh, watch videos on the Second World War when they talk about Hitler's journey, and you will hear all kinds of echoes. You'll go, "Oh, that's what Trump." Because Hitler was the first to say he attacked the news and called it fake news. Basically, news that he doesn't like—that's fake news. That's what Trump does. Hitler was the one enemy of the people. All that stuff comes from fascist thinking. They want to be right. totally in charge of something. But it, you know, in the end, it's a really dangerous voyage for them because yes. they, they arouse. Hitler was trying to rule the world, and he aroused the entire world to push back. He said, "No, we're That's not going right. to do this." And so the end is not good. Mussolini, right. the end is not good. I mean, right. all of them in the end don't do well. Some a little better than others, but for the most part, it, it's a horrible, horrible situation. So, uh, and it's that thing again of them kind of you can take it so far. But like you said, at some point, the universe kind of pushes back on you because that's just it, it, it is the way that it is. You know, you're not flowing in that 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 steady flow of, of more positivity that can kind of radiate out. You're working in something that's very dense and kind of collapses at some point and um, and also brings up other things to, to push against it, to push it back. Yeah. And by the way, through the form of people, like if you see it as a as one being the majority pushes back mm -hmm. that that can be the majority in your country, the majority through other countries, like what happened to Hitler, but it's that sense of moving in to neutralize you. And, you know, then the other thing is because then someone could say, well, okay, hold on. So if everything is one being, why does the one being create someone like Trump? <laughs> Which is a question that you ask me you think, why is this guy here? Why do these people even appear there? You get into other questions where, you know, sometimes an idiot, a malevolent person, it's helpful to move things forward inadvertently. They don't realize what they're doing. Right. But Trump, for example, I think is instrumental in bringing women into power because of the way he is. And I know this from a different side of astrology, the discovery of Eris in 2005. Women are rising and in large measure it's because of him. Had Hillary won that race, it would have been harder for women because in a sense, there is no urgency, right? But through Trump right. and the Supreme Court and everything, there, women are really mad, and women are the bigger part of the electorate. More of them vote. It's a huge problem for the Republican Party and for Trump. And by the way, he's never going to see the end of this when it comes to women because he's got this one, yeah. this one uh, aspect in his chart that goes into the next decade. So right now you're seeing, you know, prosecutors, judges, Eugene Carroll. It's, it's going to continue. This is not going to end. He'll be forced to deal with his failures through the through women telling him, you know, I hereby, which is the perfect, you know, in his own karma it's the perfect response. But also, overall, in that sense, he's even though it's, you know, you'd it'd be better if you weren't there at all. But in that sense, it's uh, when you people look in history, they'll say that was when you really saw a surge of women 
energy, you know, in, improving and increasing. Absolutely. And, and because it is those, those harder energies come out. And then there, like you said, there's a response to it. There's just, there yeah. is just, that is what they call in. And I think of the same thing with um, Putin and what he's doing. And, and he has, so he has actually grown the United Nations, right? The complete opposite of what he wanted to do. He was trying to conquer something and keep everyone at bay. And he's actually done the exact opposite because exact opposite. for every reaction, right? There's an equal and opposite, or there's an equal and whatever the saying is opposite reaction. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. And so, yeah. and, um, and when it's those hard energies, those, uh, those really, those ones that don't work with, like you said, kind of unity when they are this, this I'm, I'm by myself on an Island. Well, no, you're not. And so you're going to have reactivity that comes back to you. And I, but I always think of that. I'm like, it, he, he actually grew the United Nations, the complete opposite. He was trying to break it up, you know, with, with Trump and in the office. And then, and now he's done just the opposite. He's actually grown it. Yeah, well, even even more concerning for him would be with the logic that Putin, uh, you know, plays with. He's trying to enhance, rebuild the Russian Empire. So his whole concern has been that post nineteen ninety, the perimeter, you know, the the in Europe, they're all independent republics. He doesn't want that. He wants to move further west. But in doing what he did, first of all, Finland. And by the way, Finland has a really, really competent army. That's not a good thing. That another right, 600 right. miles. So Finland, Sweden, Sweden is not so much in this case a factor, but Finland is. And I'm seeing Ukraine will be in NATO as well. So now the entire Soviet Union is surrounded. But he's got this idea, by the way, he's got this idea that, you know, well, we need these countries to be Russian because for security. No, nobody wants to invade Russia, Vladimir. Nobody wants to go there. So that's not right. a concern. <laughs> This right. is a total yeah, lie. You're safe. <laughs> yeah, he, it's like he th he wants to go the other way. But yeah, as you say, the point is, is he's, you know, elicited the opposite. But this is the other thing that Putin also illustrates this thing about the discovery of Eris in 2005. Eris is a warrioress. It's so it was when planets get named, that's the magic of synchronicity where you think, well, how is it possible that astronomers find the planet and then they name it exactly what it is? So that's how life works. So. Eris being a warrioress is challenging Pluto, which is the the one before that. Pluto is like a super male energy. It's the idea of a male fascist. And Eris comes in and says, "No, you don't. You don't get to be in charge anymore." So it pushes back against that. What do the Russians? The Russian idea is that it should be a masculine controlled society. They're very much into masculinity. That is completely misaligned with where the world is going. That's why he's running into problems. And it's the same thing with Trump and his crew. Same idea, you know, the idea of the alpha male being in charge. This is complete BS. Yeah. It is not going to work. It could have worked in, to some extent, in the previous century. Not anymore. Right. We're moving into a different era. That's why he's run into problems. And and both of them, they're only taking their more selfish desires, you know, into account and not tuning into the entire collective. Because you need people. You know, you're not doing this in a cave. You're you're around people all the time. So your relationships count for a lot. And if you go out of your way to damage them, then, you know, life moves in on you and punishes you. And and you're right. And it's unlikely to change because that is the way they just see the world, that it's it's me and everybody else. I They are the center of their own world. And so they're never going to see that they're, they're living in a, in a, in a place that is, that, that everything is connected and it's always seeking balance. And so, yeah it, yeah, it doesn't work. Their yeah, viewpoint although, doesn't work. You know, you just said triggered something in my mind because that that is right there. That to me is the the doorway into pure magic. Is you do have to be the center of your own world because you are the center of your own world. Every right. single place in the universe is the center of the universe. But you got to keep two thoughts in your mind at the same time. You're the center of the world, but you're also a part of the world. You're also connected to the world. So if you only get one of those you get in trouble, right? Because you don't realize, yes, of course, I'm the center of my world, but I'm also connected to that world. So both of those, which means you can be completely absorbed in your own energy and working on what you believe and so forth. But, you know, you need connection, compassion, you know, respect, decency, all these things that these people don't have. They're basically 
I'm sorry, they're indecent human beings, in my opinion. Yeah. They're really, really out of sorts. They're, they're, they're causing damage, you know, constantly through the way they think, the things they do. As you said, hate. It's the, the yeah. energy of hate. Yeah. Exactly. And it, and it hasn't, with all of their, you know, stomping around and, you know, getting out their grievances and whatever else, it hasn't made them happy. Did any of them look happy? No. Do any of them look like they're in, they live in joy? Does uh, Trump looks like the most that he just looks like a joyless, miserable person? And yeah. I think and that's what he's brought to his. Yeah. I, I would say that the the base base of the base, you know that they're that's what they're living in as well. And so, it, it, yeah, it's not it's not working, and it's not going to work. No, no, and, I, and by the way, the, the cycles verify that. I mean, when I see things getting really intense and it's right around when that uh, Jack Smith trial is happening, sorry, that can't be good. I don't care that you think you can run over all the rules. You do not want to be charged by the feds. It's the same thing with Menendez. Notice that they're very detailed. They put it all on the, you know, because they investigate you. It's, it's a tough situation. And at minimum, it's going to be in the public domain and it's not going to help you, but it's beyond that. It's the, it's the logic of being stopped and, you know, uh, stopped from progressing when the cycles right. are really hard and you have and created in a way that's that we were saying earlier, how that's not like a random faded thing. He's done these things. It's not, you know, he was doing right. it. It's right. all coming out. I mean, unless you say, well, all of it is fake news. Well, that's kind of a bit, come on, it's a bit rich when 10 different right. people tell you the same thing, you know, it's all in text. It's like, if you imagine going into court and you say, well, that's fake news. No, that's your text. We've got it here. It says that you right. said so-and-so. So it's the consequence of his actions. And then, you know, he runs into the, the, the storm uh, 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 when, the, when the cycles line up, right? So, right. yeah, so That's 24 right. for sure, uh, very complicated, even more so than 23 for Trump. Now, yeah. what is the, what do, what does it look like around, what does it look like with the planets around the United States um, during that, during the uh, 2024 election? What is it? Okay, can well, you okay, so that, anything about that or can you have you yeah that, okay that that's the that's the uh it's not exactly the same metaphor or analogy here but the idea of keeping two thoughts in your mind at the same time it's a little bit different but it's the same idea about the fact that i can say trump's prospects are very poor the problem is that we're in a zone right now that is almost identical to the civil war where Neptune and Uranus were moving back in the 1860s. And so there was this buildup of, uh, you know, two sides having totally different ideas about where the country should go along racial lines, because the South back in the 1850s, 1840s, whatever, they were adamant that, you know, there was their business. I mean, they were running a really profitable business, so they didn't want right. to give that up. Right. And then Lincoln comes in and rightly as a, you know, decent human being. Back then, Republicans were decent. That's what they mm -hmm. were formed. For. Can you right. imagine? It was the Democrats that were doing. I know, <laughs> were doing. I, know. So, I know. Yeah, so then, so then there was a major, major conflict, and you can see the echoes today, a different reason, but underneath all of Trump's, you know, stuff is this idea, the you that he says, they are taking, a, who's the they? The they are right. basically, it's white supremacy. He's, you know, right. You know that, you know, back in Hitler's time, Hitler's credo, he wrote it out. He wanted, literally explicitly said, white men should be in charge. <laughs> he said it. I mean, it wasn't a mystery. And Trump is kind of saying the same thing. White people, white men should be in charge, and I should be the leader of this, right? Right. But the world has changed, and there are a lot of, you know, things that, there, there's a lot of opposition to that. And so... It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Right. It's it's it, just because he has it in his mind. And uh, and but now back to what you said though. With the U.S., the problem is that is that where we are. If you look at the echoes of the Civil War, what happened there was that the good side won, and I fully believe that the good side is going to win again. But I do have a bit of a I don't know. Worry is too strong a word, but I kind of go well. You know, last time what happened is 
the good side won, but there were leftovers, you know, where what happened, there was reconstruction. And the next thing you know, yeah. you know, they were cutting deals instead of being really firm around, no, this cannot happen. And right, we need right. to, you know, we need to be straight about it. And there's where, because we're in a more modern era and there's a lot more and more communication, the odds are better that it'll be resolved better this time mm -hmm. around. But if you are looking for a 24 election without tension, and even after the election, if you're looking for it to be settled, look again, because I'm really skeptical. My feeling is that the Democrats uh, maintain power and the Republicans are really sore about it. And this MAGA thing is not going to go away right away. But right. then if you ask yourself, well, well, what do we do? That's all we can do. You got to vote against them until they get used to the idea that this is going to bring them losses. They, they already kind of know it, but they've painted themselves in a corner because they followed this guy. You know, yes. part of it, part of it is that they were building this way for years. He was like the, the, the conclusion almost or the yes, cynical yes. of it. So now they're Absolutely. stuck because they know that if they reject them, they've conditioned all these, these loonies to think this way. And so then they, they'll definitely not win. I mean, if they start saying, uh, where well, we reject Trump, then they'll lose by 20 points. This right. way, it'll be a close election. If you mirror, if you go back to the 1860s, very tight, like some of the argument was around, it was so close, they had to cut deals, right? So, right. but there's no solution other than, you know, deny them their, their, their the vote and hang in there until they, you know, start to change their mind. The cycles do move as we go right. toward the second half of the decade, it gets easier. But my feeling, I don't know what you intuit, but my feeling is that it'll take at least this election and the next midterms and maybe even 28, but definitely the, this and the next midterms still right. under a state of, you know, Looney Tunes, people <laughs> talking. I mean, total made up stuff where you think this is crazy. I mean, what are you guys talking about? It makes no sense at all, but it's what they say. And, you know. Right. And, and, and that's the, that's where they've, that's where they've gotten to is just whatever Trump says is the truth. Nothing else. It doesn't matter what's in the press. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. If he says he didn't say this or that somebody else said something, they just believe it because it is it's it's more like a cult, really. It's not yeah. really like a normal, you know, Republican Party. It's not they have no platform. They have nothing they're trying to push They're No real like political agenda. It's all um, culture wars. It's all you know, they and us, you know, um, and, and base and, and at the, the bottom line is it's all just about money and power. That's all, that's all this yeah. is about, you know, really there aren't any grand plans at all. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly yeah, no, right. and, and by the way, money and power for the purveyors of the message, the people that are hearing this, they're not getting any money and power out of it. They're just being manipulated right. into the idea yeah. that, oh, we're protecting you and we're going to, you know, attack all the immigrants because they're the ones that, are, you know, that they're there. That's why you're not succeeding, which is completely made up. It is not mm -hmm. at all true. So but that's the message to benefit, uh, you know, the, the people that are saying these things. They want power, they want money and so forth. But the other thing is with Trump, you see this pattern where he still has this one angle. It's a Neptune transit that is maintaining his popularity, but it's going to move beyond uh, already starting next year. And as you go into 25, 26, it goes to the worst possible place. That's why if I were him, I would get on a plane and leave, but he won't do yeah. that. His best bet is to, <laughs> well, you know, we may see that. I mean, yeah, it's possible. That, yeah. That, yeah, it's a possibility. Um, yeah. What do you see for Trump? Like on, um, through, you know, till ne through next year, is his chart pretty messy? Oh, totally. It's assailed. It's it's uh, this was something I was saying. I remember late last year, wait till the spring when Saturn switches into Pisces, you'll start to see the decline and almost immediately Alvin Bragg charges them and then other charges right. came in. Right. And now because think of his chart, he's Gemini Sun, Sagittarius Moon. So but it's later in the in the sign. So the way cycles work, when you first hit the sign, you're hitting it broadly, but then when you move in and catch the degrees, now it's intense. And that's what happens next year. And right. right around June, there's a station of Saturn really close to his sun and moon. That's not good at all. It's very right. complicated. And 
Beyond that, when in 25, 26, it exits, Saturn will leave Pisces, right? But the next sign is even worse for Trump because the, the first like 10 degrees of that sign is where he's got these planets that connected to the legal area. He, he always struggles when things go through there, things turn on him and so forth. So when I look right. at that in the context of what he is charged with and the evidence that is there, it's incredibly complicated because his only play seems to be, and it's true, I mean, I think he, in that sense, he's very realistic. He knows that his only play is to try to become president again so he mm -hmm. can just make it go away, which you got to ask yourself, how can you vote for something like that? How, you know, I, I've, I don't know who I disrespect more, Trump or the people that follow him. I really have no patience. I don't care that you're too stupid. You're also too right. unkind and too cruel. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's totally awful that you would follow follow a, 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 you know the man is a total sleazebag i'm sorry he is the worst of the worst you know can you imagine if you have kids and you have this person you know mm -hmm. displaying his human behavior for you to see and this is what you're going to emulate it's brutal it's just beyond brutal but this is where we are i mean in a way if you say well look the us chart the echoes and all that do you think it's bad imagine back in the 1860s what they were thinking then because you know i mean ask yourself come on do you really think this is a good way to behave to enslave people but in a way, you know, think about it. The whole idea of white supremacy is a, an enslavement pattern. It's a logic that, I, you know, I mean, having slaves, that would be really direct. But the idea of people with money in charge and keeping everybody right. else down, that, that's a form of slavery. That's what they want to do. It's the idea of money to the rich, have it be, you know, all up at the top and everybody else can just tough it out and, and you know. But it's not going that way for other reasons too. The Pluto cycle, Pluto entering Aquarius, it's been in Capricorn since 2008. Pluto and Aquarius, Aquarius is, a, is a people sign. That's why you're seeing more union successes now. You're noticing that mm -hmm. there are more unions, you know, getting results. It's gonna go more and more that way, not the other way. The, the fascist period is 2008 to 2025. That's because Pluto and Capricorn, it's like Pluto and Cancer, the opposite sign in the 1930s. It breeds this kind of behavior where uh, males, especially. I mean, I'm not aware of, well, there's the Italian woman who is sort of right wing, but she's also towing the line. I don't know of any women that are doing this. It's mostly men as far as I know. Right, right. You know, so, and even then it's a, it's a masculine energy. She clearly yeah. has a lot of masculine, you know, a lot of masculine energy. So right, yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, the, the only problem with all this is that is that it'd be so much easier to say to people, no, 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 it's all going to be really smooth as silk. It's not going to be smooth as silk. Just put on your seatbelt. The road is going to get bumpy, <laughs> but the seatbelt is good. You'll get through it and then we'll get to the other side. And if everyone stays focused, because it's the other thing too. Remember we were saying about mental energy. We're like a right. collective of energy. If all Democrats stay positive, stay focused, it, it's as though you have to think, you know, you know that thing where they talk about uh, that experiment called the hundredth monkey, where there are monkeys on an island and in one part of the island, they were all on both sides of the island. They eat these potatoes that they find and they just eat them. And then right. one monkey on one side of the island figures out that if he washes the potato, it tastes better. So he starts washing it and then all the monkeys around them do the same thing. But then the other monkeys on the other side of the island simultaneously pick up on the monkey energy and they're all doing the same thing because it's right. monkey consciousness. Monkey. Yeah. So here we are. We have to think of it as democratic consciousness. Keep your eye on the ball. Make sure you vote. Stay positive and, and, and envision a good outcome rather than, you know, pondering uh, all day long. What if Trump gets in and, he, you know, then the Gestapo comes to my door and, you know, that's not yeah. <laughs> the way to do it. And that's, yeah. and that's right. And, and, and one one image you can keep in your mind is just see Joe Biden on Inauguration Day 2024. There he's standing right there. And just keep that image in your mind. And when you go to panic mode, go go to that image and just mm -hmm. counteract it so that you're not moving into that that energy. And and along with the the Trump stuff, you know, we we keep seeing all of these the polls, which every time they show them, I'm just like my psychic visceral like response is that it it's just not it's not correct, it's not true. And part of it is the media wanting to create the horse race. And Trump is good for ratings. You know, he is. He's crazy. Whether you hate him or love him, you're watching him mm -hmm. because you're either you're either nervous about him or you love him. So 
he's still good for ratings. He's wackadoo. So he's when he appears, yes. everybody watches like what what's going on now, even if you don't like him. And so they're they're creating this horse race and they want to create the horse race. And so really, really be very, very skeptical of the polls. And it's also how they still conduct poll. They they still conduct them in a very old fashioned way. They're calling landlines still. They're not doing things, you know, but they, they're just starting to do them, you know, through um, cell phones and things. So they're not doing them in a way that is modern even. So they're getting a bunch of old people with their, you know, whatever in the Midwest yeah. with their, with their, they still have their landlines. So, and, and, and also ask yourself just, just practically, where are Trump's new voters? There's vote there, you know, are they, they're, they're the, the youth coming in No. Mm -hmm. what, what voters going to vote for him that didn't vote for him before there, there isn't anybody, there's right. nobody. They're not going to vote for him because the last time he was in, we were all wearing masks and afraid of our groceries. So who's going to want to, you know, to go through yeah. that, you know, that is where we were. So, um, you know, he did an awful job at, at, at a, you know, with, during the pandemic and, and the economy you know, tanked and that's the kind of leader he was, you know, so there are no new Trump voters. So yeah, <laughs> if yeah. everybody just does what they did last time, it's fine. We're going to be, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. But like you said, it takes focus and, and staying positive, staying in that, that mental space of we're not doing, we've been down that road. We're not going down there again. It's yeah. Just yeah. No. And, and, and your polls, uh, if you look at averages of polls, they tend to get a lot more accurate than single polls. And national polls are as good as useless because a national poll, Hillary won the national poll. She lost the election because she went into a problem in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. So the polls that count, look at the battleground states, Google, battleground states, they're about 11, 12, 13. Track those states. If in those states, Biden is having problems, then you've got a problem, but he's not having problems. For example, in Michigan, Michigan is a big problem for Trump now because of the way, you know, by the way, Michigan, who's in charge of Michigan? It's a woman, right? Big problem right. there. All on that. Right. <laughs> and so, and then uh, Wisconsin, another state that uh, has caused a lot of problems, but Wisconsin is also, uh, because of what they're doing as well, they're trying to do anti-democratic things, nothing right. like getting people worked up to vote more and vote against you. So yeah. track the battleground polls because you can win a national poll but it's going to be what happens in those states like montana maybe not montana that, that that's not a one of the worst but say alabama montana too they, they'll go republican but california uh washington state they're democratic it's the other states places like michigan wisconsin pennsylvania georgia north carolina uh even florida florida is uh, a lot tighter than people think you know at, yeah yeah in an election so that's what you want to track and if you see that, that's all you need to see, right? And then pair that with, if you compare Trump and Biden through the charts, it's not even close, not even close around how complicated it is for for uh, for Trump, you know, to, right. to, to do this. Uh, and he has not even been named the nominee yet. Right. You know, right. he's just the pre presumptive and and. So, you know, I think people are, are are worried because Biden's not out there yet. Well, it hasn't really begun. They're not even out of the primaries yet. So give it give it time to let them beat each other up for a while. And then when it's settled, he'll be out there, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I saw this thing. I, yeah, it'll be OK. <laughs> I, I saw this thing that was fascinating where they, they were these people were discussing how Biden should start to well, not so much Biden, Biden or his surrogates, people that are working with him start to point out because, you know, the, the whole thing is, oh, Biden is too old. Biden's cognitive decline. Have you heard Trump lately? The things he's saying? I mean, the man no, it's is so concerning. Yeah, he's saying crazy things like he, he thinks that he that he beat Obama in 2016. He thinks that uh, he thinks that uh, Biden's gonna, <laughs> World War Two. I mean, stuff where he's, you know, I would make out and say this man is in cognitive decline, like just feed yeah. him his own medicine. And you know what? It's true. And, and keep saying he's going into I would even say he's also very stupid. Listen to him. Read what he says. It's just word salad it makes zero sense. Anyone that reads a transcript of Trump's words. It sounds like an escapee from a mental asylum, honestly. <laughs> exactly. So, so you know, play on that. And right. sometimes Democrats are too nice. And so I, I wish they would hire someone like Rick Wilson, you know, a, a yeah. hard 
a hardened Republican <laughs> to help them. Well, absolutely. And, you know, and the thing is, too, is that those, you know, if you think that the coalition against Trump is huge, was huge in 2020, which it was, mm -hmm. wait till 2024, yes. because people like Chris Christie and all of these, like all of these Republicans that are, are testifying against him are going, they're not going anywhere. And this coalition of, of, of Republicans against him is just going to get bigger this time around because they know now he is really dangerous. He right. wants to do dangerous things before it was just speculative. Mm -hmm. Now they know he really didn't want to leave and he was not going to leave. And he staged a coup and that all these things happen. So right. he's a known quantity now. So you're, you're going to see, I think, a coalition of Democrats, independents, Republicans pushing back like you've never seen before. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I it's going to be quite something. Yeah, I mean, you can almost read that through his own chart, you know, the tremendous opposition that he's facing mm -hmm. because of that. I mean, he's he's created it again. This is not, yes. don't tell me about faith. He did this. He was there. He, he was Absolutely. running this thing. He's just getting the result. So what do you intuit about um, about McCarthy? Because he, he's also in a, a really, uh, between now and, and around February, it's pretty tense in his chart. Like it, it, it could be from the astrology, there are decent odds that he may be thrown out, you know, that he maybe he, may, he loses his job. I really do think he's going to be removed. Um, it's weird, though, because I'm not picking up on who comes back in, like to replace him. And I don't know if it's just like they can't come to some kind of decision. So it just kind of stays open. <laughs> like it's just and maybe he'll be kind of like, the stand-in until someone else comes in. But I I do feel like he's going to lose the speakership before 2024. Huh. And um, and in 2024, I think it will be um, Hakeem Jeffries will be, because I think they'll, I think the Democrats will take back the house. I just do. Um, I actually think they're going to take back everything, but with the house, I feel like he leaves, but I can't see anyone coming back in until after the election. So it's kind of weird. I mean, it just could be that, these energies right now are unsettled. They're so erratic. And so mm. that there are, and as when you are, when you try to move into what's going to be happening, you move into that, where's the future going? You're just following a, you're, you're following an energy pattern. You're following the, the probability, mm -hmm. right? And so the probability that I'm seeing is he's going to get kicked out, but there's not really that's where kind of the probability is like it dissipates because it, there it really doesn't go into anybody else it just kind of lay, lays there and i think it is because they're just in chaos they're they're you you hear it i mean it's so unusual for them to be criticizing each other in public the way they are i remember in back in the bush days you never heard Republicans talking negatively about another Republican. They were in lockstep mm -hmm. and it is just, it's like a war in, yeah. in, in the Republican party right now. So you're just not seeing that. And so maybe as he gets pushed out, we'll be able to more clearly see who may be likely to come in right now. It just doesn't feel like there's anybody quite there yet. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. pulling me in and you're, you know, that's pulling me into them and Ener energy wise, it just isn't there yet. So yeah. I do agreement. feel like he's going to be out of there. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, yeah, full, full agreement, a hundred percent on that because it's, it's, he, he's an example of, of uh, also on a major Saturn transit because it involves the Saturn return and it's in a really tricky place. So it's amazing too, that, you know, the people always argue about things like which news is the right news. You know, the news was predicting this long ago they were saying if he gets the thing then he's going to have the right wing nuts moving in on him and that's exactly what they did and they're threatening him and and then you'll have to talk to democrats but if he does that he angers the base i mean talk about that's right. like someone painting a room and they paint everything but the corner and then they stand there and they go like where do i go now you can't do anything because if he he could easily solve it just get democrats to you know cut a deal but then if he cuts a deal they'll say you're a rhino and and also mm -hmm. Trump will be furious. So they're in a, in, a, in, a, in a major jam and it's really reflected in his, especially now though, this period between, like I said, between now and, 
and the around the new year february is really dicey because whenever you see a saturn station in an area of your chart given the context right i mean uh, for an ordinary person that's to, it's a period where you're dealing with some things like a, you know it's fine you just do it but if you're a public person and this is the situation it's tough it's really really tough yeah. it isn't and it's a good it's a he's actually a really good um example of not knowing not having a pure intention right because he just wanted to be speaker that's it that there was no thinking beyond that he just wanted to be speaker wanted to be speaker it's not like he wanted to do great things for the american people or he he had the, an agenda he really wanted that was passionate about that intention was so um limited and so um small that you can see it playing out exactly that way now it's gonna his his speakership is going to be limited and small <laughs> because that was yeah. his intention right? yeah exactly yeah yeah and i mean uh, i i often say with trump i say it couldn't happen to a nicer guy well it's the same thing for this guy because he's yeah. also not a nice guy the, the, these guys you know the thing that is most irritating is how much bad faith you see in the gop these days just bad faith they're doing things all the time that are cruel that are you know deceptive it's like they cover all the bases on the negative side and that's not good it's not good for anybody it's not good for society so we just got to stay on it and push back until they realize because you know by the way this guy he calls himself a winner he, all he does is lose he loses over and over and over everything he touches so they'll figure it out you know exactly at some exactly. point and then and then at some point. things things will, <laughs> will settle what else can you do other than show up right so yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Just show up. And like you said, keep that positive energy going. Get those positive images, keep them in your mind, whether you believe them or not, just put them there. And, um, and it, it, it helps. It really, really does. It helps us to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, cause it would be, you know, I mean, think of, think of a situation. I, I don't, I'm not saying it's going to go like this, but let's say, I mean, probably partly like this. It's natural in this country. It's very divided. You, you could get a thing where, the poles are tight, you know, they tighten, for example, maybe there's a big lead and then it narrows. Well, that's even more inclination or more of a signal to tell you, you got to go vote so you can right. you know, make sure. Otherwise, if you say, well, I'm not comfortable, well, then stay home and what, lose? That's not good, you know? Right, uh, right. The main thing is we got to show up to, to, to produce the result. And uh, yeah. I think overall, though, from the astrology, as I say, the echoes, are so so you know precise that it's mirroring that tremendous tension but then that it, that the outcome is to the to the uh you know in quotes the good side the more democratic yeah. side I, i'm getting yeah i get the same thing so i think we're, we're on the same page which is good <laughs> so, any any other closing thoughts you have on any any topic that you've come across that you wanted to comment on politically or otherwise well nothing the main thing the main thing i kept getting people asking about were, were these polls because they're just so close but it's so you know I think we think of people all being like us very focused in on what's mm -hmm. going on and very and people just aren't you know until you know even even a couple of months before the election that's when people are are like oh 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 gosh it's going to be Trump oh yeah I'm going to go vote for Biden there that's just how people are they're involved in their lives picking up their kids and going to work and figuring stuff out they're not in it like we are, you know, the, or, or like people on TV are and stuff. They're, they're just not in it yet. And once, once it starts to get closer and closer and closer, then people start deciding who they're going to, who they're going to vote for, who you're talking to now are the entrenched Democrats and the entrenched MAGA. And that's who they're picking up right now. And we're not, we're not moving. Right. So once they start talking to the independents and talking to those disillusioned Republicans, that's when you're going to see the spread start. And um, it will probably be close, like you said, but I, I very confident that, that it's going to end up in, in Biden's corner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So full agreement. All right. Well, was it great being with you? And you uh, I look forward to the next one. Me too. All right. All right. Bye, everyone.